When you're entering text into Copilot, are you issuing a search or are you doing much more than that? We're going to learn from the world's expert on Copilot design, Liz Danzigo, just in a second. Stay tuned. We are in luck because we have Liz Danzico, a dear friend, someone I have been a fan of for many years, one of the great designers of our time who covers every spectrum, design educator, design practitioner, design leader. And she's also bringing something very special to the kitchen. Welcome, Liz. Hi, John. Great to see you. What do you got there? You know, I brought you, um, well, I'm here to visit you oh. um, in Welcome your kitchen. kitchen. So yeah. thanks for having me. And um, I brought some eggs. They're, egg. they're real eggs? They're, they're real, real eggs, real Whoa. live eggs of wow. a number of different types uh, just kind of gathered this morning. Wow, they were hatched. That, well, no, not yet. No. Not yet, not hatched. No. <laughs> <laughs> we could talk about it. No, uh -huh. no, they're not hatched yet, okay. and they will never hatch. Okay, got it, got yeah, it. Can you can eat them. You can you know, eat them. chicken's not going to pop out. Yeah, well, thank all different you so colors. Much. Perfect and, uh, for the kitchen. Yeah. I love the colors. Well, you know, um, you know, Liz, we were talking about how when you communicate with these things, is it like a search or is it more than that? What is it? Good question. Um, I'm not sure we ha how much time do we have. It, when you mm. communicate with these things, is it a search? Um, it can be. I mean, it, I think the, the interesting question to explore is it can be anything you want it to be. So it, it isn't a search. It's something that, you know, when we first started down this road, um, at least in the work that we've been doing with AI, it, we joked that it was post search, right? Something sort of a bit beyond search, um, but it can be search if you want it to be. But the new thing sort of a year and a week later for us um, in that we uh, just celebrated um, the one year birthday last week of uh, the work that we've been doing is that it's something well beyond. So it, it's conversational in that you could do a search, um, in that it queries the search, you know, the search index, but it's also a large language model and it brings the two together. So you could do a multi-turn kind of search, which is more akin to a conversation, or a multi-turn kind of research project, or um, any kind of sort of in-depth turn by turn, mm -hmm. sort of back and forth, whether you want to think of it as improv jazz or a conversation, a dialogue, a research project where there's two ways instead of just one way. So it's kind of like when we used to search, we would do that and we search and then scroll. But now it's more like we go back and forth, more like we're dancing. Dancing, that's mm -hmm. the word. Correct. I see. Okay. Yeah, dancing, mm -hmm. I mean, any, and there's so many metaphors and I think that's why it's been so hard to explain Blaine or get one's hands around, on, you know, if you think back to the introduction of some some other sort of world changing um, metaphor, the, the iPhone, which was a moment, um, and it became this piece of glass that had, could be a bank, could be a hospital, could be a toaster, um, could be you know, a recipe book for anything. It could, it is anything you needed it to be at the time over a period of years. And similarly, this is similar in that it could be, you know, it, it is a bank, it is a hospital, it is these things that, you know, depending on the needs, it's sort of rising to be what we need it to be. Yeah. Um, and that's why the, the way to describe it and the words that we use and the words that people are bringing to it um, sort of change what its relationship is to the human. So it really is like, even though these won't become chickens, of course, we're at the beginning stage. That's right. Of all this stuff. Look at that. Yeah. The so this is the beginning stage where we're at right now with all this kind of design. Well, we're so in luck because Liz is the designer to design that movement. And Liz, you know, we usually use a, a toaster, but we graduated to a microwave oven space age microwave oven to do agent processing. So if you don't mind, can you can you grab three agent personas out of there? Yeah, go ahead, yeah. Okay. Three of them, because I know that you talk about search 
and not post search. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to like make three agents to illustrate that in code. And this is appropriate because I'll just say that while I am um, a designer yeah. and among other things, this type of work takes the work of many people, many, many people. Uh -huh. So oh. I am part of this process, but also represent many other many other people. Completely. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I mean, Liz like has so many people working with her. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now we have the agents in. And of course, we're using GPT-4, right? Yeah, it's a, That's right. It's a foundational model. It has eyeballs <laughs> on it now because uh, it can see, right? Okay. All right. Let's get cooking. GPT four is pretty heavy. Well, you know it's foundational. That's, uh, that's the way the way those foundation rocks. Okay. All right, Liz. So this is the recipe we made for you, especially for you. Uh, Liz is VP of Design at Microsoft, long beloved design luminary. Please check out the interview she had in the Great Dis Discontent. That's a beautiful interview. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, also, in the New Yorker recently really kind of leading the charge on shaping how we think about this question of what is a copilot. So what we're going to do is we're going to like bring over the packages. Okay. All right. Okay. We're bringing over the semantic kernel 1.4, brand new, and it has all kind of new capabilities. We're going to add the agent seasoning. So mm -hmm. we're going to add the packets in there. Um, and then uh, this is, a, you know, I, I added some speech recognition here just for the sake of it. You want to test it out for a second? Go ahead and hit play there and sort of say something. Give me the files created today. Oh, okay, that's a good test. So that so it heard you, and then we're gonna have it talk. Give me the files created today. Wasn't trying to mimic you, of course, but uh, I mean this kind good. of code was so hard to write before. I mean you're from the web programming era yourself, yeah. so so easy, right? Weird, just one call. So now fast. we're going to bring in the, pardon me? So fast, too. So fast. Now we're going to bring in the uh, experimental agent package, which in 1.4 is leaving experimental stuff, leaving the egg era. And we have it here. Now, look at that. We're going to hatch the agents. Now, the three agents that are in the oven, uh, we have one called the search engine robot. It's you are a search engine from 2005 with limited understanding of how to take natural language input. We know that search engine, don't we? Yeah, we do. Yep. And then uh, we have the prompt teacher is a professor of prompt engineering. I'll give you tips. There are many cropping up. There's, uh, oh my gosh, I've got to take a course from them. Mm -hmm. Then there's the prompt writer, mm -hmm. the expert at mm -hmm. writing prompts. Which is a, a growing discipline in a, the, the hottest field right now. It's hard to write prompts. It is. It's, well, it is like the hottest field right now. Prompt mm -hmm. writers are much in demand. Well, they can just like pop a little agent into the oven and like, you know, they well, can like get it working. You know? now, now they can. Now they can. So here we go. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to now make, we're going to hatch those three agents, the search engine robot, the prompt teacher and prompt writer, and they're now available. I'm giving them randomly assigned ungendered name, Alex Jordan Taylor. Uh, and then the moment of prompting is beginning. So I'm going to like just enter the prompt by text for a second here. Yeah. I want to get the files from a server that I own and send them to a client. And now I'm going to ask Alex to respond to that. And Alex is the search engine robot. You know, like you type something in and Alex says back, understood, I'm searching for Right. We're used to that, right? Yeah, yeah. That's like old school Predictable. Alex. Predictable. Yeah. Predictable. Predictable. Oh, totally. Now we're going to ask Jordan is the prompt teacher. And Jordan's going to take that prompt and kind of teach us something about how to write a better, write a better prompt. Mm -hmm. What's Jordan going to say? <laughs> Jordan's thinking about it. Jordan's thinking really hard because it's going through that foundational <laughs> model brick right now, through the concrete, seeping to the concrete, working really hard. GPUs in that concrete. Here we go. Uh, so uh, Jordan's given one, two, three, four, five, six helpful tips. Mm -hmm. And then just giving us tips, asking us questions like a good teacher. Socratic yeah. method, right? There we go. Yep, number list. Okay, but now this is the moment of Taylor, please do the honors. Can mm. you, uh, Let's see what Taylor uh, has Taylor to say. is the is, is going to give us actual advice. We're being more like a professional. We're paying Taylor to help us as an expert. Mm -hmm. What's Taylor going to say? 
Right. I know, like, you know, Taylor like works by the hour, so right. it's going to cost. Dragging it's it cost. out. Yeah. You know, and, and this kind of work right now, the writing is the design, right? The writing mm-hmm. is the code, the writing mm-hmm. is the design. So Taylor, the writer, is, is quite interesting. Okay, uh, let's see here. Well, transfer, so in giving examples, I would like to use SFTP. Which protocol do you want to use? What operating system? Giving examples. And also, uh, Taylor is trying to sort of give you a kind of a, a template. Now, mm-hmm. Taylor, as you can see, Taylor is non-deterministic, right? Sometimes the dice, you roll the dice, mm. there's a dice rice in the, uh, <laughs> you know. Sometimes it answers, sometimes it doesn't. So this time it did not give the uh, template we asked for. I think Taylor's asking a lot of questions, which is also a good, mm. good response. Okay. Right. And as someone who is all, you're, you're, you're a writing, designing, programming, leading person. Mm. So is this the perfect time for the skills you have, you think? I mean, if there was another person, I'd, I would, not speaking for myself, but say, say there was another person. It is the perfect time for people who have felt like perhaps they needed to choose among these kinds of skills, right? It is the perfect time for people who have a multidisciplinary kind of background to come together um, and bring them together. Yeah, writing, design, technology, and education, right? Because mm-hmm. there's a lot of having to explain how this all works. When young creatives come to you and ask you, what should I become? What do you tell them now? I mean, you ran an entire program. I, what do I, what do you, well, um, I usually ask a lot of questions, like Taylor, right? Um, I ask questions about what they want to do. I then refer them to a couple of your books um, and other books, which might help them answer their own questions. Um, And then, yeah, I ask them. I mean, the answer is within things that they say. So Mm -hmm. mostly my work would be like a mirror, kind of reflecting Mm -hmm. back to them. So are you saying that these systems are like mirrors. I am saying, yeah, I, I think, I, well, not only that, mm. not only are they mirrors, but they're actually going out and retrieving things nice. that people have, act, have said before and reflecting them back. Oh, they're in enriching caps. mirrors. Enriching I like mirrors. that, I like that. Let me, let me do a little cleanup, because uh, when you start making agents, by the way, you got to do a little cleanup, so phew, mm. all cleaned up. Well, Liz, you know, thank you for taking us through the world of prompting, better prompting, the world of design. What should our our kitchen visitors know about the future? Because you're like at that vanguard of the future of co-pilots. Yeah. I, well, I am learning. I think what, what we should know is I'm learning alongside of you um, and everyone else, maybe sometimes um, lucky enough or... Um, naive enough to be one step ahead, depending on being at the right or wrong place at any given time. And so just be open, be open to the tailors um, of of the world, um, whether they appear on the screen or in person, be open because things are changing so quickly. And so how do you put yourself in a position to be open in a safe and, um, you know, kind of, protected and guarded way, not open to things that might um, kind of interfere with what you feel comfortable with, but in a place where you feel like you want to explore, how do you put yourself in that position to be you know, able to receive anything that might come your way? Mm. Um, and, uh, and in doing so, you're gonna be ready to accept whatever kind of comes um, your way. That said, Prototyping, 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 I think um, just on a pragmatic note, is really the ubiquitous advice that I give to anyone. Um, Whether you have, I don't see anything in this immediate environment, although I'm sure we could use one of those eggs, like whether you have a Sharpie, um, a laptop to code, a pencil, you know, whatever it is that we could (laughs) get a little messy, but whatever you have to start like, building your ideas and making them real. Um, If you keep yourself open and then take that idea and create prototypes and start making things, that's sort of like the magic combination. And so those are the two, those are the two building blocks. Um, And with that, 
you kind of get to the next the next thing and you get ready to kind of accept whatever that next thing is coming. So whether it's GPT X, whether it's something beyond in a form of a goggle or a, you know, uh, a, an animal, we don't know. But, uh, but I think you keep those two pieces of the equation in, in check and kind of keep yourself open. And that's, that's the best you could do. There's no, there's no formula, there's no code, there's no, um, there's no book that would get you um, kind of to the next stage. It's just those two, those two pieces of advice. Well, you heard Liz say it. That famous phrase from IDO comes to mind. A prototype is worth a thousand meetings. So Liz is saying, go prototype. Thanks so much, Liz. Thank you, visitors. Thanks, Stay tuned.